Welcome back to Dropping Gems. I'm your host, Julian Saluda, and tonight we have a Harlem legend in the building. You probably heard his songs in the early 2000s. He was in this crew called Dipset. Ladies and gentlemen, JR Ryder. All right, so welcome to Dropping Gems, man. So the whole purpose of this show is to take you back to before you were a JR Ryder. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I know you just did a, a podcast not too long ago, so thank you for being nah, here. Now you're ready, bro. You know what I mean? I'm here. But uh, so. I, came, lot... I really came back for the cut, you heard? <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, I mean, let's start with something simple, you know? Mm -hmm. What were you doing before you were even in Dipset? Growing up in Harlem, what was just life the average, like for Gerald Ryder? You know, just the average kid from Harlem. Well, I, I ain't the average, you know? But um, as far as the, the lifestyle, it was just you know, running around, you know, hustling, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, getting into trouble, rapping, doing things like that. Yeah, of course. You and know then what I'm you met Cam. How old were you when you met him? I met Cam at 16. 16. Yeah. Cam, sure. Cam, Cam was a, you know, I'm from Harlem, so to a Harlem, to a Harlem dude, a Harlem, a kid from Harlem coming up, that's a fan of hip hop. It's similar to a kid from Brooklyn growing up and being signed by Jay-Z. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So that was like the equivalency to me getting signed to Cam. So it was just, it was just, it yeah. was dope. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, at 16, getting signed with Cam, growing up in Harlem, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a chip on your shoulder right there. Yeah, hell yeah. You know, 16, just... Yeah, because you got to be in Harlem, like, you know, it's, it's a lot of shit popping. We got the confidence. Is, the confidence level is sky high. So you definitely got to be on your p's and q's. You always gonna have somebody trying to compete with you. Trying somebody, to with you. yeah, somebody trying to tell you like you know they fly than you or they rap better than you. They, and speaking you know of competing, I mean? I mean the battle rap scene was popping out there too. Yeah, that's right. A fact. Yeah. So for you, you were battle rapping before uh -huh. you met Cam, and I was reading some shit, and that's how. Your name got buzzing. Yeah, as right? far as in the, in the street. Yeah, I started battling. I'ma take him back to school. You get some pop with my shots can pick up. Have you jerking on the concrete? Looking like you got the hiccup. My aim is good. But before you step to the plate, how about you cop a gun and go get a vest for your face? Hey yo, you need to take a moment to chill before I treat you like trucks and put a little chrome in your grill. I have niggas saying, how he get that in the scene? No homo, but how you fit that in your jeans? I'm a hustler, more in the cokey keys. Rocks on the block be fatter than Oprah's knees. The people's chant, notice every line is fire. When I spit, don't get caught in a line of fire. Stop talking about you running a block before I run in a block. Have you and your man running a block? Ask right. about me. Jay got the longest gap. And the shoes on the truck look like they belong to Shaq. Whoa. Yo, man. But um, once I did that, I was able to, to get to, to Cam. But I used battle rap as a stepping stone for me to, you know what I mean, elevate yeah. and get to the next level as far as putting out music no, and being a real That's artist. weird, because like nowadays, mm -hmm. people don't really just be battle rapping like that now, or even the scene is not as... No, the scene is battle rap is big. So to even now this day? Right now. Oh dang. Like do you have any right like, now? Drake yeah. is partnered with Caffeine. That's the biggest, one of the biggest platforms. You, you gotta, oh. yeah, you gotta do your research, big Yo, dog. Yeah, no, I'm listening, yeah. I'm listening. For me to so, let you yeah, so you, the, I would I would have got dragged if I just let you just make that <laughs> comment. Yeah. So for the viewers right now, the general public, you know, because it's a, it's an underground scene for a lot of basic listeners like myself. Mm. I mean, what do you think is like the in your opinion, three great uh, battle rappers right now. Murder Mook? You never heard of Murder Mook? No, sir. That's what I'm saying. I'm wow. Like, so just, Lux, just three, no order. Loaded three, Lux. three, no order. Okay. Yeah, I, I would say Murder Mook, Loaded Lux, and whoever else. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to just say those, those are the top two names right there. Yeah. But taking you back to, you know, being in the scene in Harlem, being mm -hmm. somewhere at uh, Dipset at yeah. 16 to 18, and you were just kind of hustling, you know what I'm saying? How was that like for you? Well, no, nah, I met Cam at 16. Uh-huh. At by 18, I had a, you know what I mean, brand new car, house, all that. I was, I was, Sheesh. yeah. By then I was already, cause I was in a bidding war at a young age, you know what I'm saying, with, with a few labels. So, um, yeah, just me, me at that age, I just, my confidence level was sky high, I was hungry. 
You know what I mean? And it was different. It was different from what it, music, the music scene is now. Like right now, the music scene is more, is you, is you have more opportunities to be seen and be heard. Back uh -huh. when I was coming up, it was like YouTube was super fresh where people didn't understand it. It wasn't big. It wasn't the number two uh, website in the, in the world. You know what I'm saying? But n like now... I mean, but with the now though, you also have to agree that music is a little a bit more disposable because it's mm -hmm. just easier to, you know what I'm saying? You stream it's, it's it. It's quality yeah. over quantity. Yeah, exactly. No, no, it's, no, it's, it's quantity. quantity over quality. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah. how it is now. And Yeah, so you know, it's, it's a microwave era. So once, you know what I mean, you could be, be, be on one album and f for two days and then the next two days you want another album. It's like people attention span is like, it's super short. Before it's like artists used to focus on making dope albums, making like the albums were a masterpiece. It wasn't three, four albums. Like shouts to, you know, rest in peace DMX, but mm -hmm. he was basically the only artist back then, you know, in the rap era to put out two albums in one year. That was like, wow, that's dope. That's I mean, they crazy. both went platinum. But that's nowadays crazy. you got artists that put out, and it's still dope, but you got artists that put out six, seven albums a year. You know, unless you really, your pen is really elite, those albums are not all gonna hit, most likely. You get what I'm course, saying? How many albums of Kendrick you got? Shit, we probably only got like three or four. You know what I mean? Right? So, yeah, so. And he I mean, disappears. He's in and out. I feel like. I mean, people are just waiting for that one, right? Yeah, I feel like this this era is a little bit, it's different. It's more yeah. of a microwave. But I mean, era. we lost. We did lose a great one. How was your relationship with DMX in the past? He had um, he had used me and, and my guy Harrell for one of his mixtapes, but I didn't have a relationship with him. Yeah. He just respected, I guess, my skill or whatever. But DMX is a legend, man. Rest in peace, to DMX. He's he's. He's one of a kind, man. Yeah, it's crazy, you know? man, because, you know, I wouldn't, I don't want to talk about the drug situation, but if we kind of compare, like, the 90s or the 2000s, mm -hmm. the way the, the substance abuse compared to yeah. now. Right. And then, like, in your opinion, like, what's, because you grew up around that. I mean, see, with, with DMX, is, DMX is a little bit different. DMX was laced. Yeah, so at a young age, so that's how he it developed like his habit. It was 14. Nowadays, yeah. these kids is they making their choices. As soon as they they ready to leave the house, they popping all type of pills and smoking yeah. all type of shit. Like I'm from an era where doing anything besides weed wasn't cool. And to me, that's that's the that's the, that's my personality. That's how that's my my moves. That's how, that's what I stand on. I don't. I mean, I don't do shit like that. But. Yeah, that's the, that's this, you know. I mean, it's been going on forever, but since before I was born, before you was born. Oh, yeah. It's been going on in music for years. So, you know, I mean, it's, I just feel like it's more publicized now. It's more accepted. So, it's more glorified when people rap now. about it, when people rap about it, it's like cool. You know what I mean? Of course. I mean, it's like if you see a rapper now, I feel like they want to look like a rapper mm -hmm. before they actually yeah, be yeah, one, yeah. you know what I mean? And then, yeah, yeah. and then that comes with the girls, the drugs, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, it's a little bit more different, but you know, now you're growing up in Harlem, yeah, you yeah. have old Harlem and new Harlem, Facts. and you see the gentrification. Facts. It's a little bit changed, it's a great but thing the people for the city. It's a great thing for the city. Yeah, I don't though, think right? the people change. I just, I just feel like it's a great thing. Yeah, you wanna, you wanna expand, you don't wanna keep shit, everything like, uh, at one, at one, yeah, yeah, one yeah level so, or whatever. Yeah, let me take you back when Dipset was the shit, right? Okay. And then you guys were traveling and seeing the world and mm -hmm. different countries that you went to. What, which country stood out to you the most? As far as on on the road? On the road. Um, on the music tip? On like, the music tip. Like, yeah, I feel like Japan, like Shinjuku, Oh yeah. Yeah, I feel like in Japan they like they just they, they love music. So it's not it's not like New York. It's not like a the US. US they'd rather sit back and critique an album or critique a song like damn he should've that should sound like the last song. Like you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like out out you know, when you cross seas you really come across fans that love the shit out of music and don't care about uh, what you look like yeah. or what you, you know what I mean? It's what crazy, you, like, I, I can't imagine just being in Japan, because I went to Japan, but, like, seeing, like, the Asian community 
Just mm-hmm. showing mad love to you. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I was. I went to. I went on a five city tour in Japan, and that was like just me as an artist, me and my guys. But um, yeah, shout out to Japan. I love Japan. Yeah, because I feel like every time you travel, it's an inspiration, mm-hmm. right? And uh, Japan is so cultured, like. Their culture is very strong. Oh, yeah. Like they never lost it from back in the days. Like, yeah, everything's getting advanced, mm-hmm. but they they still have the temples. They still have, you know, you know, the sam- the samurai, the yeah. culture. You really mm-hmm. you really see that. Mm-hmm. And then when you come back here, you realize, dang, like, we kind of look like sellouts in the sense of like, we, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like the the retro kind of lifestyle has been so upgraded that it's more modern now. Yeah, right? exactly, but. No, that's, that's, uh, yeah, we went to Japan, that was a good time, and I think when I was cutting your hair before, I was like, damn, you went to Japan? Like, I can't yeah. imagine that, but. Yeah, Japan, Japan is fire, Japan is fire as hell. Yeah, the Japan groupies, the Japanese groupies. I mean, yeah, you know, there's groupies <laughs> everywhere, man. There's groupies everywhere. You know what no, I mean? That's tough, though, man. And then, you know, heading into that, like, back in the days, it was like 106 in Park and yeah. TRL and, Freestyle Fridays was a thing. Mm-hmm. And then you really had to go home and watch it compared to now where- Now you're on your phone. Yeah, exactly, bro. Yeah. And that's what makes it a lot more disposable, right? Uh, yeah. And, uh, and yeah. like, how do you feel about that as an artist that saw that change? I mean, honestly, it makes me feel like, damn. I mean, I'm still in it, so I still do music, course. so it's all good. But it made me feel like, damn, I wish I had that. That, that type those of outlets yeah, back then. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? But it's cool. I mean, if you're an artist now, right? So for the genre. I look at it from a do, two point of view. Yeah. It's like, I could have, I wish it, would, it, it was it was popping back then. But then again, it's dope to see music, you know what I mean, elevate or whatever. Of course. But I'm still a little bit turned off by music as far as, you know, the business side. I mean, on that side, like, let's say you're a new artist. You're talented. Let's just say, like, hypothetically speaking, you're trying to come up. Mm-hmm. Right, try to get known, and you know that there's these platforms that exist. Mm-hmm. How would you approach being an artist to expose your work? As far as what? In today's era. In today's era. Yeah. If I was a brand new and artist. brand new artist, no followers. Honestly, it would be easy for me. It depends, though. It mm-hmm. depends because I don't even know what kind of rapper I would be in this era. You would be I a little dumbed down. I come from an era with Jay Z and all of them. Like those are the people I look up to. Like so, then how would you approach it in this era, knowing that this is what's going on? I don't know. Because this, this, this era are... will kind of fuck my head up. I might, <laughs> I might have fucking my fingernails painted and shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Singing and shit. I don't know. Like it, it, it is. But you know, there's there's a there's a young viewer right here that is probably still believe in lyricism and the art of just having a pen and just knowing how to write. How would a guy like that come up? I think that I think I think you should be able to do everything. Like you should be able to do party shit and 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 lyrical. But honestly, the lyrical or things, the, the 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 songs with substance, when you're really talking about something, those are the songs that last, that stick stick around forever. Yeah. Those songs course. that just like poppy, gimmicky. I feel shit, like talking about like the club songs. Those are in and out. Scene. Those yeah. is those is, and they get corny fast. Of course. Three years from now, you like, yo, you remember when you was doing this corny ass fucking dance or this stupid ass song? <laughs> <laughs> but in the, but back then. But they still was, got a bag dope. off that though, man. Yeah, yeah it's so cool. It's like, it's, there's, there's so many ways to get a bag in yeah. 2021. You don't need music. <laughs> True. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, so you were with Dipset and unfortunately you guys broke up and then you had to go solo, right? Mm-hmm. Like, how, how was your mindset? I was always solo though. Yeah. Dipset but, wasn't a group, it was a label. It was a label. Mm-hmm. But then once that ended, right, mm-hmm. what was your mindset heading to like a new chapter? It was just, uh, I mean, I'm from Harlem, so I hustle. It was just keep hustling. I mean, I really don't base my my moves or my future moves off of what other people are doing. So when I seen that happen, it's just, okay, I'm gonna just continue doing what I've been doing. And I, I was a sponge around Cameron and Jim Jones and Joel. Yeah. So the business aspect, the business side of things, I, I was, it was easy for me to pick up because I was in those meetings. You know, I was yeah. present when my deals was being negotiated and business is being handled. So it was it was easy for me. I actually got my biggest deal on my own. Fire. You know what I mean? How did you end up getting that? I just, um, shout out to 40 Cal. 40 Cal had um, gave me a number of this independent label 
that had some money and they wanted to invest and they wanted to sign me. So I had just I had just finished up a deal with Warner Brothers. So I said, all right, let me get that number because I'm going to just do a quick deal in the meantime while Cam is going through what he's going through, I'll be doing this. So I ended up, um, I ended up taking a meeting with them and, you know, I just, I got confidence. So it's like, I'm from Harlem. So I, it was easy for me to talk to um, the label reps and the label CEO and break down what I wanted and why I wanted it and what I was going to be yeah. doing. Gave him my, my lawyer phone number. And that's it. I mean, you at that, I mean? that point, was that. though, like, once you go independent, like, do you sign with a label or do you go independent? There's two sides to independent. Yeah. You could go fully independent or you could mess with an independent label. Independent labels consist of, like, Koch or, like, Empire. You ever heard of Empire? Of course. Yeah, so those are independent labels. But technically, it's not really a person going independent. Going independent 100% is you putting out your own music through, like, TuneCore or pl platforms like that, that go straight to stores, to the stores, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah. back then you had the thatpiff.com and how do you hip hop and shit. I mean, that still exists mm -hmm. now, but now it's like, you could just make music to, like we can make a song right now mm -hmm. and drop it to all platforms. Yeah. And everyone could just find out about it through like your Instagram or, right. and it, it's like, you don't need the co-sign from this, websites anymore to find real music it's more mm -hmm. so like do you have an independent individual fan base yeah right so i think that's the harder part i think yeah. since there's so much opportunity for people to get their music heard it's harder to be to get in front of people and then youtube and instagram they make it harder by changing their, their the algorithm. algorithms yeah, the algorithm. every like four or five months yeah you know what i mean so now you have to put money into marketing dollars so you can be able to be seen by the people that are your followers. So, yeah, I think it's hard to start from scratch. Yeah. I think it's hard. I mean, I think it's easier for people to hear you. So if you're really good, you're out of here. You know what I'm saying? But I think if you're not a standout, if you're not a superstar, then it's going to be hard to stand. The game's a little to, bit more to, saturated now because of that. Yeah, because everybody's doing it. It's easy. You yeah. can just turn your phone on and go live directly from YouTube or Instagram. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's why I wanted you on the show, because I really want people to understand, like, you can reincarnate the lyric in, in you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. in, in today's era, where, like, everything is about melody. Facts. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. but, but, like, I mean, shout out to the new music, though. Like, I bump that shit all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, like, with COVID, when there's no clubs like that, mm -hmm. you're in your ears. Like, you want to be inspired by music, not right. just, like... Do a freaking yeah, TikTok nice. dance. Yeah, and... TikTok shit. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Um, I like I like oh, I like music period, and I like hip hop period. So, but the publicity um, on that TikTok shit is so. Yeah, it's it's it's, dope. it's yeah. very um, out of nowhere. Like you could become uh -huh. a celebrity overnight. Yeah, I mean I think it's dope though. I think it's dope. But you know I, I, mean? I think but, it's um, a curse too because a lot of people will receive that clout, and they don't know what to do with it. That's dumb. I mean, it is what it is. It's yeah, the same. platform is still serving its purpose. <laughs> you know what I mean? They just might not know how to go about the fame and, and things oh, yeah, like that. Course. You know what I mean? But yeah, I think it's a good thing, though. I think TikTok is a good thing, you know? But you know, after that, and then for you now, like, what's next for? What's next? What's next for J.R. Ryder? Because um, the past is the past. Yeah, 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 I mean, I just, you know, I'm still doing what I do. New, new, new album, new mixtapes, like, you know, I got my own CBD company. Mm -hmm. um, got my own merch line, clothing line. You know, I'm from Harlem, so like I said, I'm, I'm a hustler. You know, whatever, whatever I feel, I, I do stocks, I day <laughs> trade, I try to balance everything. You got out. into the Bitcoin game too? The, 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 yeah, the yeah. cryptocurrency? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> I knew about I knew about <laughs> Bitcoin when it was a few hundred bucks. But that's the power of having the connections that you made in the past. No. 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 I mean, when it's surrounded. The doggy dog world. I mean, no one's gonna sit you down in the game and teach you. You have to like teach yourself. Like you gotta pick up. If not, you get left. You gotta move. Yeah. You gotta be fast. Like ain't nobody gonna walk you through it. Hold your hand. So yeah, those things, especially those things, I had to learn on it myself. But you know, I feel like since you had the platform of music, mm -hmm. that was kind of like 
I wait for you to, I was like, you know, everyone has a perfect pitch as a mm -hmm. business. For me, it's like, you should come on my show. You know, for you, it's like, yo, I do music. Like, people will want you in that circle. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, like, people that are powerful, people that inspire you, you get to sit down at the table and like, you're invited. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important, like, to be great at something mm -hmm. before you diversify your assets. But what I notice is I'm great at everything I do. Sheesh. Dressing, it doesn't matter what it Love is, that. CBD, whatever I'm doing, I bring, I bring, like, you know, certain people just got that it factor, like like a 50 cent. It don't matter what he's doing or even Cameron, even yeah, Jim Jones. Cameron, like, it's, it's like, you know, it's just, I bring certain, a certain way of thinking to the table. Yeah, y'all were the group that just wore the crazy shit, man. Like the fucking colored Tims, the the mm. fucking pink mint coat, bro. That was yeah, ironic. Yeah. Like till this day, people are still wearing that for Halloween. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like when you saw Cameron wearing that shit, like what was in your head? Like, yo, this guy is nuts or like? Nah, I mean, Cam was always one of the flyest dudes ever. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, why you think Supreme popped off? Because of New York, bro. Because of New York or because just Jewel's and Jim Jones picture True. on that shirt? True. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, um, I mean, you know, Dipset, we, 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 you know, you young, so it's kind of hard. You wasn't there. No, I wasn't. That's why I want you on the show because yeah. it's like, I was looking at a lot of videos like, yo, y'all were really running them shits, dude. Like, I was watching this old video of you. And you're in this hotel room, you're talking about your chain. Mm -hmm. And it was like, that's that colorful chain. You're like, this ain't no colorful chain. This is a real, this is be dancing, this and that. How many oh, different yeah, colors you said, nigga? Like, this eight different colors right here, <laughs> man. For those who don't know, y'all niggas rocking all them Ricky Dick diamonds. Them shits don't even shine, man. Don't be bad at me, man. Get and money. I, like, I mean, it's similar to what people are doing now. It's just a little bit more, more like outlandish, more like out there. It yeah. might count, it might take out everything they got in their bank account and just count it up on camera. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, it ain't nothing too much different from what people are doing today. Of course. You know what I mean? It's just more publicized. Yeah. Before we had shit like MySpace and all that. Yeah. And, you, and you got Instagram. I mean, you were able to work with a bunch of great rappers, bro. Like, mm -hmm. you have a song with Lil Wayne, dude. Like, I got five songs with Lil Wayne. How was that shit, man? Like, how I was, was it? Being with, with Weezy, just like in the studio like that, how was that? Um, it was dope, you know? He's, that boy, is a, he's a legend. So yeah, he, and he's a great, great rapper, great writer. You know what I mean? Solid dude, so. Yeah, it's always dope to be in the studio with Weezy. Shouts to Mac Man, too. That's legendary. Man, hell yeah. Let me, uh... I mean, it's hard for me to describe. It's like, because I'm, I'm, I'm caught up in my own world. Like, how people look at Lil Wayne, I look at that. I look at myself that way. Of course. So, you know, you if you in the studio, you might be watching to see how it is to be around Lil Wayne, but I'm just doing me. I'm in there to do some, some music or a song with him, so it's like, all right. Let me do what I do. But somebody else sitting back, oh, yeah. watching it, like, yeah, they probably look at it like, yo, nah, little Weezy. But yeah, I mean, I could pretty much say, like, he's, he doesn't write, you know that. He doesn't write nothing down. And he, I mean, and I'm not even talking about back in the day. Like, I was in the studio with him three years ago, not back in the day. Like, it started back in the day. But I got, I got five songs with him, so. So he's in the studio three years ago, he just off the rip? Yeah, just off the top. Like, I see him go in the booth and, and, and spit a verse and then uh, not like the, like a, like a part in the middle of the oh, verse. The and not, not even, not like a part, like a, like three bars or four bars in the middle of the song and tell him like, yo, um, erase that. And he'll do it right, he'll do it over freestyle, right off the top of his head. And it'll sound fire. Damn. So yeah, he's, you know. You do the same thing, or you just be, you write too. You just write, and then you. you no, I write. Yeah, I write. Yeah. yeah. My name Jr. Right. <laughs> hey, no, that's <laughs> not Jr. Freestyle. <laughs> yeah, hell no. I don't like the. That's why you got that name, uh, Writer's Block, because you be writing so much, you just run out of ideas. Sometimes you're like. Oh, nah, nah, man. nah, nah. Writer's Block was the name of a, uh, my mixtape series. Oh yeah. Yeah, so it was just. Um, what do you it was do? A metaphor what do you me. do when you get a writer's block as an artist? I don't get writer's block. My writer's block was a metaphor 
It's basically saying when, when other rappers hear me, they get writer's block. You understand? Yeah, I don't, I wasn't, um, I wasn't getting writer's block. Oh, yeah. Then I wouldn't be able to be JR writers like Yeah, no, no it, it, it'll, it'll contradict what your branding is. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that. But then now, you know, we got the new music now, mm -hmm. and you're listening to this shit. I need three artists that you fuck with. That's now, now in today's um, era. Not in any order. Uh, Drake, obviously. There you go. Um, from this era. Oh, right now I'm currently listening to Rowdy Rebel, though. I Rowdy Rebel. Rowdy. Yo, Fred, who else I listen to? What? Yeah, besides <laughs> besides uh, Drake and Rowdy right now. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, duh. I listen to some songs. Like, you know, I, I really, like, don't listen to a lot of stuff because sometimes I don't understand it. Like, I, mean, I, you got I, only, I only speak two languages, I mean, English like, and Spanish. Like, so if I don't understand the words, then I can't. You got Roddy Ridge, bro. You got, you know what I'm saying? You got Bad Bunny. You got who? Bad Bunny, bro. He's Spanish. No, 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 Rod, no. Yeah, no, <laughs> Roddy, Roddy Rich is, Roddy Rich is fire. I haven't heard from Roddy Rich in a minute, but Roddy Rich is a pop. Like, he's like a commercial artist. So all I know from him is singles. Yeah. I don't know an album from him. Like, I don't... His album is fire, though, bro. I just listen to the songs that's on the radio. For me to go on Spotify and look up Rowdy Rich, it's like, doesn't make any sense if I'm gonna walk, if I'm gonna jump in a car <laughs> and hear it on the radio. It's crazy, because back in the days, it was like, you had to download the music and you're stuck with the playlist yeah, that you had. Yeah, we had LimeWire. Yeah, 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 LimeWire. So for me, as a kid, like, once I downloaded it and I spent my day outside of the computer, like, I can't add new songs anymore. So. I really end up appreciating a song. Yeah. Because you're stuck with the songs that you have in the playlist. Mm -hmm. Now, it's like, like I said, they're disposable. Spotify's and they update the new playlist all the time, yeah. universally, and you have new artists coming in and out, in and out. Mm -hmm. How do you keep up the, the money, or how do you keep trending in today's era like that? I got a cool fan base, so like, like I said, I never had a job in my life, and that's because I, I put out consistently, consistently, I put out a mixtape, and you might not hear about it. You don't have to. It's to the point your where is it's care like, of that. it's like, yeah, it's like, you know, I have a following, and just like everyone else, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, yeah. I mean, as a new artist, would you sign with a label? Like, if you're a new it artist, was, I mean, if it was a big situation, yeah, if it made sense, but honestly, I, I wouldn't want to even sign to nobody. Yeah. I think the best thing to do as an artist is to be independent unless you feel like it's beneficial to sign with somebody big. For it to be beneficial, it has to be like, you know, marketing side and, you know, they're known for taking artists to the next level, something like yeah. that. Almost like they can, yeah, take your game to the next level as if you can't do it on your own almost. Yeah, but I don't think money should be it because like the money is they putting up, they, they signing you for or they giving you up front is all recoupable, so. It don't make sense for, for someone to sign just based off of, hey, $2 million up front. That $2 million is like sky high. The interest but is music, sky high. But music, to being a bank. an artist is a privileged thing. So, like, you don't mm -hmm. really make money mm -hmm. as an artist unless you actually. Unless you know the business. Exactly. Yeah, that's but, it. But what if you unless, don't? If know, you don't know the business, yeah. you don't make money. Exactly. That's so, it. So, I mean, as a, as a, you know, like the kids watching this, like, how do you even learn the business of the game? Learn? Right now? YouTube. Thanks. Nice YouTube tutorials. You know what I mean? Copyright all your music. Put your, you know what I mean? Copyright all your, submit your music to the Law Library. Not the Law Library. <laughs> I said the Law Library, the, law the library, library of Congress. Yeah, yeah, you get what yeah. I'm saying? So, um, so you can, you know, you have proof, even though you, you have a natural copyright once you write something or once you rap something, that's yours. But, um, you know, you want to have proof. You want to show platforms like TuneCore just in case it gets to that point uh -huh. that you own a copyright or whatever. But, yeah, it's easy to, um, to learn, man. It's just you have to be willing to learn. Take the you time out to do the research. Yeah, because the information is out there. It's 2021. Before, I needed, I needed to to get a fucking lawyer, manager, like all type of shit. 
Yeah. Now it's like I can do shit on you my own. You can be your own. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Any, any artist. And that's the difference now, which is great because you could literally take care of your own self mm -hmm. as long as you invest time in it. And then you might not be great at it in the beginning, but you get better at it and you adapt. Right. And then right. The, the better you can hold yourself down in the circle as if like you do it professionally, the easier it is that people will see eye to eye with you right. instead of taking advantage of you. Right. No, that's right. a fact. But you know, like, we've seen a lot of bad deals in, in the past. The, was that the, the 3060 deal and all that shit? The 360 deal, 360 deal, yeah. deal, and then that kind of like gave a bad taste for a lot of labels. Yeah, Would I mean, but so? that's, those are the deals that they, they're giving out right now. That's fucking crazy, bro. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that goes back to saying, like, if you don't know the business, then you don't know the, especially if you don't know your value, it's like 360. So, but that's some people don't really know their value because they, they kind of wait for other people's acceptance. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, if you know the business, then it should, you, you, you good. You good. You A1. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shouldn't have no problems. Nah, no, that's facts. But signing to a label, I don't think. It's necessary? Yeah, I mean, un unless you, like, unless you feel like, you know, you want to, you build a, the, your fan base from scratch, you know what I mean? And if I that's mean, the case, but honestly, they, labels are not even signing people that don't have a fan base, that, yeah, that yeah. don't have a lot of views, that don't have a lot of followers, so. That's why a lot of people, some people yeah. would, would do a gimmick just to get fans, just to, they, yeah, that's right? The that's, that's, that's the clout. <laughs> I mean, you've seen it before, like, clout, clout is, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's like, some it's a, it's a poison, bro. It's, it's a drug. Yeah, it's poison. Cause like, I think there was an era where a lot of people would just do fuck shit in the streets. Like remember the boom gang times when like motherfuckers yeah. would start stealing. And yeah, he changed his life. He did. He did. It's, it's yeah. a shout. Out to, uh, he's a John Gabbana now. He's named yeah, John Gabbana so. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he really. But he had, he was battling some demons, bro. Mm. Some demons. At one point, I thought he was fake, but I guess. That was some real shit, bro. That's crazy. Yeah. But till this day, like people got inspired by that era, and they want to throw a gimmick to somehow get traction mm -hmm. in the industry, right? Facts. I mean, back back then when you were like going up, did you have a gimmick coming up? No. I don't know. Other than just battle rapping and all this, huh? No. Yeah. It's just my bars. I just know that I could rap better than you. That's it. How old were you when you started writing? Oh, uh, nine years old. Nine years old. Mm -hmm. You have like an inspiration in the past that made you kind of want to do that? Or? Yeah, like Big L, Tupac, Biggie, Wu Tang, all the greats, people that can really rap. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, now the, the, this rap is different. It's like, it's more like singing. Did you just start singing, bro? Nah, I'm good. <laughs> That ain't, that ain't where my heart is. Man, you don't even need to learn. You don't even need to sing in today's era, bro. It's literally like... Yeah, auto-tune. Auto-tune, dog. Auto-tune, you good. But nah. I mean, not to, not to say that I wouldn't... I wish I could, but I wouldn't try if I don't know... Like, if I don't have the talent to, like, I'm good. Or like, what was, like, the craziest, like, shit that you ever experienced, like, just being on tour with the guys? Like, on tour? Yeah, like the craziest, like, like, damn, what the hell is that? Um, I don't know. That's some crazy stories, but you know. <laughs> you gotta hide I'm that. in a relationship, so yeah. <laughs> like, uh, we gonna keep it at that. That's some crazy <laughs> stories. <laughs> it would have been nice, bro, to see you, like, in action in the studio, because, hey, you we know. Gotta, we gotta link. We gotta as, a, as, a, as a lyricist, you know, like, when, you, when you're making music, like, What's like your go-to like process. recipe, you know? Um, I might I might listen to one of my old uh, freestyles or something I did recently and um, get the juices flowing, get the thoughts, you know what I mean, going. And then um, I put on the, I go through beats and I look for something that's gonna, that grabs my attention. There's usually something that don't sound like the last one I did. And then once I do that, I listen to the beat over and over until, until like, until until it gives me something. Until it, until like, it's hard to explain. Oh, no. It's not premeditated. You're letting it I don't go to you. on, yeah. I don't go on record and try to um, 
say, hey, let me make a club record so I can yeah. be popping in the clubs. <laughs> I go Bro, off of, I go off of like, it, I don't know, it, I know what feeling, you mean. a vibe. I know what you mean. You it's know almost what I'm like, it's crazy because like nowadays, like I could go to a club or whatever and at home it could be like, I'm a rapper. Mm. And back in the days, it's like, spit some shit then. Now, like, you, you don't really say that no more. It's like, oh yeah, just let me see your music. Yeah. You feel me? Back, like, back yeah, then, because it was like, a lot of these rappers, if you ask them in person, you know, let me hear you rap, they're going to start singing. <laughs> All the capella. They might ask you, yo, put on the beat. Like, back in the day, like. Oh, they, they would the make beat. you just, like, you would make you just spit a verse. They would make it like, yo, like, spit some shit. Because I was, re I was, I was, I was doing a little bit of research, and I, mm -hmm. I think I, I, I see what you uh, heard, what you talked about, like, yeah, man, like how I pull up and kill like the Like the best, just the top, the number one rapper in the game is who right now? Drake. Okay, Drake. Drake raps better than a lot of these people. Like he literally raps. He's a like he was signed to Lil Wayne. He's signed to Lil Wayne because he's a good rapper. Nicki Minaj is the best female rapper ever because she can rap, and she still is popping. The number one female rapper. But people look at everything else, like all the other people that are more popular, but not bigger. They didn't break records like them. They can't rap as good as them. They don't have bodies of work like them. You feel me? So I, I still feel like Substance, that type of shit, like J. Cole, when he drops, everything Everybody stops. Everybody listens. It's almost like the dawn is And then the when house. he leaves, then everybody, everybody's all confused. the kids can go play. Yeah, it's like the Don just did some shit. Yeah. Let's go listen to what they got to say. That's but, the type of rap I like. I like substance. There's like, a lot of pressure on the rap like that. Cause yeah. It's almost like when we saw uh, Kendrick drop uh, Good Kid, Mad City, that album, people were expecting something better than that. And a lot of people kind of like argued like, you know, some people say, yeah, it's better. But that, that piece was such a classic that you always have to top your last project, but it's almost like, you know what I'm trying mm. to say? Like, like, how do you keep topping the last project that you did? Just by staying, just staying true to yourself. It's just, almost like you know it's better I mean? to just retire after you drop a good one or... Nah, I don't man. know. <laughs> you know what it is? It's just that I feel like, like, I don't feel like the music game has changed, like, as far as lyricism is dead or anything like that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a balance. It's always been a balance. Like, balance. the music that's popping right now was existing back then. Young Thug was just Andre 3000 to me back then. Yeah. It's, it existed, but it was a balance. And more people, more rappers, l they like bars. They like lyricism. They like to be complex with their shit. Now, it's more people. It's a choice. It's more people choosing to do that, something that that's not genre. lyrical. Yeah. And then it's only a handful that wants to do the lyrical. So from a fan point of view, it's like, oh, this is not popping anymore. Well, no, it's just not, it's just say, not a balance. They'll literally say hip hop is dead. That's yeah, yeah, but it's say. not, it's just not a balance. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, that don't make sense if, if Drake is the number one rapper. He, That's that true. nigga's nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So it just yeah, doesn't make nice. sense to me. But it's just, you know. And the great thing about Drake, though, is that he doesn't wait that long to drop new music. It's not like, mm -hmm. you know, Kendrick hasn't dropped music in a year. You know, unless, Yeah, he's different. He's a different yeah, type yeah, of rapper. Exactly, bro. With Drake, it's like, I mean, he just he was just features, a lot of features on the side. Then yeah. he'll drop once and knees, you know, other, other, other projects on the side just to tease people. Drake is Drake is keeping his foot on people's necks, yeah. breaking records left and right, doing all type of outrageous shit. Like, but Kendrick, like they love hip hop. Like Kendrick, J Cole, they put out masterpieces. I mean, bro. They so put out... so Kendrick or Drake? Kendrick or Drake? Drake. Damn. Drake, what you talking That's about? Crazy, yo. Oh, so, you like you like you like Kendrick I mean, I mean, better? I mean, I mean, I mean, you're a lyricist type of guy. You know what I mean? So, okay. so, so Drake is assume, not lyrical. Well, I would assume that you would choose like somebody who is like. Oh, why? Really... Because he's oh, because Kendrick is not as versatile as Drake. You think I will go for Kendrick in terms of the lyric? Yeah, the lyrics. But I like, but you being you being ver versatile. Yeah. To me, it's you have a edge over the person that's just can rap. Like, if they both can rap 
and he can switch it up and sing and melody and swag it out, then I would like his shit better than his shit. I don't care about the moons and the stars and all this other shit. Like, I just like, I like someone that can, that knows how to put these words together. It's all about like the choices of words you choose to put on these records and how you choose to formulate these, these sentences or these bars. Yeah. You know what I mean, but I like Kendrick. Kendrick is a, is a, is a, is a elite. He's yeah, elite. But, but between the he's two, he's elite. Yeah, but between but the two, to be fair, it's preference because they both, they both nice. Just like J Cole, they both, they all nice. But my choice to listen to is to listen to Drake. I like yeah. Drake. Because even if I did as J Cole, you would say Drake. If I compared it with two, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's facts. Wow. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, but that's good though. That's that's crazy because I learned something new about you today just based off of that. I'm like, damn, what? Yeah. Sometimes all I listen to is Drake. Isn't this shit crazy though, bro? How like when an artist passed, that's like they just hit numbers like crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I've yeah. always told myself, like, man, if I was an artist, I would just fake my death, bro. Because <laughs> the numbers would just go skyrocket, dude. Yeah. I mean, but it, it looks sky. It looks like a sky. What, what's 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 sky right rocket like, into? The sky like just goes up, like just like you know what like I'm saying. Like on the chart, like when you on look chart, on Apple yeah, Music. Yeah, and there stuff. was a graph. There was a spike. Yeah. Just and then and then until you look at SoundScan, Nelson SoundScan, and see the numbers and see he only did like ten thousand, but it looks like something because it's number two or number one on iTunes, but it doesn't really take much to be a number one on iTunes. Is when you number one on Billboard. And that's 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 a difference. You understand? That's where the money is at. That's what you could sell a thousand records if you sold more than than the other artists that came out that day in your genre. Then uh -huh. you're number one. That's it. I'll tell you how to do it real So hip hop's not dead. No, <laughs> hell no. <clears throat> no way. I've been getting so many old heads in the barbershop talking about hip hop is dead. Like, what y'all listening to? Y'all painting your nails now? And yeah, I mean, da, da, da. it's just, it's just, it's just. I mean, so what can we do to reincarnate the lyric game, bro? Like, in the your lyric opinion? game is alive. You, but, know, but you don't know who, you know who Griselda is? No. You got to do your research, man. Yeah, but, they, the, know. they end right now. You know West Side Gun, Conway no, the Machine? No, sir. We're looking at Blast, Vino, fucking. But you heard the Jay Z verse. You heard the you heard the best rapper to ever live. You heard his verse, right? When he said the other B and can't forget about yeah. the other B. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather be like him than anybody else. He's worth two billion. How can hip hop be dead? You have to because they're diversified. They the biggest rappers to ever I, live. I don't, I don't Nas. Think... And Jay Z, I think you I, see you see what he did with Coinbase. Oh, yeah. You see what Jay Z but, but is. See, but see, is that music though, or is just that music? I mean, as far as their status, where they got, they wouldn't if they wasn't if they weren't rappers, if they weren't who they were. I don't know if they would be who they are today. Of course. Oh, okay, I'm just yeah. saying, like if they, you know, I'm pretty sure, like you said to me earlier or before. Yeah. Nas got financial advisors. He has different people around him because of who he is. Yep. You get what I'm saying? And that, I think that's where it really comes all comes down to. It's like, like I said earlier, like you need to be great at something, because mm -hmm. then you become th surrounded by people that are also great at something. Right. And that other person could be an investor. The other right. person could be doing properties. Right. And then you're here that never went to college, never mm -hmm. been exposed to any type of like business one-on-one -on -one class, mm -hmm. and you know more than a regular college kid. Right. And it really comes down to, like, who you know. But on top... Oh, let me ask you a question. Uh -huh. Off topic. Uh -huh. You think the baby is... can rap? I think the baby can make music. You don't think a baby but can rap? His... You ever heard him on a radio freestyle? I never heard his radio freestyle. So you don't... you're not yeah. into... So you're not yeah. into the whole... I'm not you're not into yeah. rap all around. Exactly. Because you might listen to A Buggy, but I you're like not gonna listen to A Boogie like on Funk Flex Freestyle, though. You know, you don't yeah. buy into the artist that much. No. So you listen to Drake, but you didn't listen to like Drake on Charlie Sloth's Freestyle. Like, I you heard know. that one. That one's a good one. Okay, but yeah. you, that's what I'm saying. Because it's, it's Drake. Because it's Drake. <laughs> yeah. 
So if you you gotta check out everybody, I check out everybody. That's how I know what I know. That's how I know that hip hop is not dead. Mm -hmm. Because you know I check everybody out. You know what I'm saying? You gotta really like dig in. Cause oh, yeah. it's, you know what I mean? But then we also have to be fair that like the general public is also part of a consumer base mm -hmm. that you could possibly sell to. You know what's crazy? Uh huh. All right, money bag yo. I like money bag yo. You should, like, he's one of the hottest yeah, things like out there right yeah. now. All right, so you think he can rap? I think he can rap in the sense of, like, it's no, like... No, not in the sense, yes or no? Yes, you, you I would say rap? yes. I would say yes. Okay, all right, Lil Baby, you think he can oh, rap? Oh, of course, 100%. Like, rap? Okay, all right. Gunna could rap. Gunna, of okay. Um, Young Thug. See, now rap is very, like, just rap, you know what I'm saying? And then there's rap, and then there's music, right? All right, so out of four names I named, you said three of them can rap. Those three, Little Baby is number one as well. Like, how can hip-hop be dead if you just said oh, they no. can hip rap? hip-hop not dead in the sense of that. I think hip-hop is dead in the sense of, like, the lyrics. How? So you don't, uh -huh. you said they're not lyrical? Because today, Lil Baby said he's the Jay-Z of this shit. He's little oh, Jay, he's the baby Jay-Z. He just tweeted that two, three hours ago. How do you feel His about that? His main picture is DMX. How do you feel about that? Little Baby, the guy that yeah. you guys look up yeah. to. Yeah, how do you feel that he, he says it's Jay-Z? How do, no, I don't feel, I feel like he's paying homage. He knows his history. That's true. He knows who's the man. He wants to be like that. He wants to be up there. Some people might think like, He oh, want to be a billionaire, multi, a fucking multi-billionaire dating a billion, married to a billionaire, the yeah. baddest in the game. Yeah. Right? You, you get what I'm saying? But oh, if yeah, you told little baby or the baby or one of them, that they can't rap. Yo, y'all can rap, but y'all not lyrical. Oh, Come nah. on, y'all not <laughs> lyrical. They'll be like, what? Nigga, we, what? You bugging, like. <laughs> So, you know. No, I agree. It's just, I feel like it's an opinion it, it's when like, it comes to like, certain artists. You know why, though? Because the word rap is so, like, concave to just rap. So when I think of rap, it's like, oh, he's saying, he's, he's rhyming one word to another word. And yeah, Because we don't have the, we don't have, like, the subcategories, like, rock and roll, punk rock. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not no, it's not soft rap. It's just, it's just rap. Matter of fact, there is hardcore rap. But I don't even know what that the means. Fuck is hardcore I don't rap. know what that means. Like gangster rap. This junk. Like this. I mean, this I mean, shit I that mean, you could look up on iTunes I, and it'll I think, show I you. I think gangster rap is like drill music. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I know I mean, gangster rap was like Ice Cube and all of that and shit that, you know what I mean? I Gangsters mean, talk. I mean, it's like drill music, though, don't you think? Like Chicago, like. Yeah, drill little music dirt is. Type shit drill like drill Ron, music is popping. But I think drill music is drill music. Nah, I don't think. I wouldn't call it gangster music. Yeah. I would call it drill music. All right, let me do this lip, tuck it in. We give a lot of respect to a lot of artists that diversify their uh, their songs when they take risk. Of course. And they go, you know what I'm saying? Like they yeah. go to another genre. Hell yeah. Like we, I mean, you know, we talked about the baby. He just did a pop song with that, what's her name? Uh, Dua Lipa or something like that? Like she, she's, she's Yeah, she's, I think so. I think I forgot the name of the song. Though. Yeah, but that's what makes him a that's, rapper. Yeah. He's a rapper. Like he's lyrical. Like, I only fucked with Lil Baby because he was nice. When I heard him on the radio, I knew he was nice. Before, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you, you don't oh, know, no, you, Lil you Baby. know Lil Baby when he was wearing the Pampers? He was a fan? Or did you see that when you got onto him? I saw that when I got onto him. But it I was a song, uh, was. Freestyle with Lil Baby. And yeah, I was like, yeah. dang, man. I already knew he was nice. And to this day, I'll be wondering, like, did he really freestyle that song? Which one? That song called Freestyle. And it's oh, got a little baby, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now he had he had a wild mixtape too. That, that was fire. You know what I mean? But um it's just you... I feel like he went commercial, so and he had a lot of commercial success. So to the to so the that's average what's fan, making money, yeah. It's like, oh nah, he ain't not a lyrical rapper, like he's just a rapper. Like, you know, he's just, it's hard to describe. But yeah. Nah, I see that. You Damn. always got people that and on top of that, like, even with the young thug, people like that, right? You always got people that, even back in the day, you had Nate Dogg. Nate Dogg. Nate Dogg was a, considered a rapper. That shit but was I never smooth, heard though. him rap. That was like, smooth, I never, though. You know what I mean? That's but the shit that you listen to was, at the parties. He wasn't considered an and... R&B singer. Like, they didn't even put him under R&B. You get what I'm saying? Max B, P. 
people like that, they was, you know, they considered rap. Yeah, so you're pretty much saying this is like very similar to what's it's happening similar to right it. it's now. Just, it's just more of it. It's like, okay, we have Young Thug, but then we have 30 other baby Young Thugs. Yeah. And then we have Lil Baby, then we have 30 other baby. I mean, we saw that when the SoundCloud era came, about, came around, right? Yeah. And like a lot of these rappers But were... Drake, look, not to cut yeah. you off, oh, my bad, but Drake, we have Drake. But see, with rapping, with that type of talent, you can't, just the, any old person can't just mimic Little Drake, that. like Little Drake you can, or something. You can mimic a Rowdy Rich song. You can mimic those songs. Amigos, all you gotta do is a little bit of da 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 like you riding a horse. It's just but I didn't think about that type Try to sit down. One day you could come up with the Amigos. Amigos is innovators, man. They they change the game. But you could you could try you could come up with all type of the baby flows and the ad libs and all type of shit, but try to sit down and come up. Was, was something like a Drake, like what Drake would say, or J. Cole would say, or Jay-Z would say, or, or Kendrick would say. Everybody, because if you did, you would be considered nice. Like, oh, he's good. Yeah, but he's then, it, but then it's such, such a thin line, because then it's like, oh, he's copying Drake. He's got... it's, it's just harder to do, so you yeah. barely see it. With, with, with the mumble rap and the gimmicky rap, anybody could do it. And that's what people are doing, even with drill music. Everybody's doing it because it's easy. It's fucking easy, bro. You could literally just just say words that don't even coincide with each other. Nice. You talk about a gun in one line, a chick, and then end it off with popping a molly. <laughs> hey, but you just went on a whole sense. journey. Yeah, you just went to a whole journey. Huh? You're like, holy shit. Yeah, <laughs> one sentence, you talked about three different things. Like, they had to, I mean, you're so... You do a lot of research when it comes to new music, so like you, mm. you know, like all right, this shit is trash, and then it still pops it just be off. Songs like it'd it be songs that I like because sometimes people give off vibes, and I know that everybody's not lyrical and no, like uh, everybody don't aim for that. You know what I'm saying? Like I knew Missy Elliott was always nice and lyrical, but when she did the gimmicky pop shit, like I knew what she was doing. She was being versatile and shit like that. Or she was trying to sell, right? Like she was trying to get more people to Yeah, to but listen. all her commercial success overshadowed her being lyrical. She was yeah. always lyrical. But though. then now you have to think about it like this. As an artist, it's like, do you go commercial and get the bag? You or, go everywhere. Or do you you do commercial, you do regular yeah. rap, you do underground, you do it all. Because at the end of the day, people are going to be like, oh, he changed. That's like saying, yo, uh, I'm saying, no, I'm, you a shooting guard, bro. Like, yeah. do you just shoot threes all day? Nah, no, damn. you lay up, you cross, yeah. make somebody fall, dunk on their head, throw alley-oops, get the most success, uh, assists, yeah. triple double. That's what I'm talking about you wanna right do there. It, you want to do it all. You know no, what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about right there. And, and, but that's, that's, I think that's the curse of a lot of artists is that when you try to do it all, it becomes, oh, he changed. Oh, like, oh, I miss the old Kanye. For yeah, example. That's what I, they... I miss the old this, I miss the old that. Yeah. And it's like, how do you cater to the people that knew you before you were commercial and cater to the ones that are also that also? Nah, you just keep elevating and yeah. leveling up and picking up new fans because it's like Apple don't worry about people that want it, that like the iPhone 8 better than the 12. Like nah. they don't turn around and be like, yo, damn, a lot of people are saying they like the 8 better. We should change <laughs> stay with, it. Stay with the 8. And we should just put the box like, nah, bro. I mean, if it's you're going like, to level up, it, you got to make sure you really level up. Yeah, like actually, course. like yo, like this is the way to go. I'm gonna take yeah. a risk, and then let's just fucking let's fucking go with it. You know yeah, you I mean? got like you said, Lil Baby. He do, he got all type of shit, country songs, all type of shit. Oh, of course. Wiz Khalifa, he's a prime example. You were just with him the, last night too. You heard the Paul Walker joint, like you know what I mean? Like that boy is. Oh, that he's that, versatile, that but bag. he's nice that too. That was a bag right there. Man. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, I feel that. All right, I'm about to hit you with the freaking brush. So, okay. hey, listen, uh, on, this is the first time Jet Rider pulled up without his do rag on, bro. Yeah, that's yeah. That's crazy. A fact. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a fact. That's, that's history. I had, yeah, I had, I had some other interviews to do, and I had to keep, I had the hat on all day. I forgot, man. That's history right there. I was tight because I stopped. I went from the interview back to the condo just to fucking pick my do rag up so I could have it on for like yeah, 20 minutes. Yeah. 15 minutes, maybe. But, but you're the only dude I know that wear it, but don't really wear it. It's just laying on your head. <laughs> oh, sometimes, yeah, I do that. Because I don't like this shit to be tight on my head, like strings and 
should be putting pressure on my oh, shit. Hell yeah. But yo, man, like, thank you for being on the show, man. Nah, so this I appreciate is like, you this for is one of those me. things where like a lot of people. We gotta do the set, the studio set. I really too. want you because I really want to show people how you really approach a beat playing in the background. Yeah. And you're like, all right, this is what I do. I let yeah. it speak to me because nah, let's do that. people don't really understand that that concept of like mm -hmm. when someone says I let music speak to me, I look at that because I'm an artist myself. Like when I cut hair, I let the hair talk to me because that's yeah. how it lays, you know. Yeah. So I see the passion, and. A lot of people are missing that in today's era, bro. Uh -huh. Like when people want to be rappers, they don't want to be rappers because they want to be a face of the culture. They just want to make They like money. the lifestyle. Yeah, they want to be famous, yeah. bro. Like I hate it when people come up to me and be like, how much money do you make? Because I want to be a barber too. And I'd be like, I'm and I'd be like, there's I was a just telling my dude, like uh -huh. my first check, my first check, Jewel's called me with my first check. Uh -huh. I didn't even want it. You didn't I want was it young. I just wanted to. I was happy to be on the album, and I wanted people to hear me, so they could know that I was one of the best, and I was coming because the money. I know I was gonna get it regardless when people hear me, and see like, yo, he's he's good, like he's nice. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I didn't care about the money. Nowadays, it's, it's everybody's I mean, motivated by just the dollar. If J.R. Ryder wasn't signed and never there, and you had a regular day job, mm -hmm. what do you think it would be, bro? That'll never happen. <laughs> I would have to be born in Idaho, so I was born in Harlem Hospital, bro. Like, that would never happen. Yeah, because because I was I was a uh, you know I think I read something and like you said you were riding trains every music video I would be there like mm -hmm. it don't matter I walked there if I had to and oh yeah I like that bro I like that oh yeah that was like when I was 14 15 and I was doing public public access shows that was like the thing okay. and DVDs that was the thing to get out there it was like our YouTube back then. You know what I mean? But um And just to be out there, it's like, nah, I'll walk there if I have to, you know? Yeah, there were times where I would walk. I would walk 20 blocks. I mean, that was the thing. It's like What's the What's the biggest bag you spent on that you kind of regret now? You know, because you know, when you get that check and oh, you never jewelry, been... just spending money on jewelry, you know, while and out. Not even just or going on trips, like, you know what I mean? I go yeah, out spending spend, spending money on jewelry. Yeah, that was the dumbest shit. But the value going to spend itself, fifty thousand right? on a chain was dumb as fuck. You still, you still you still wear it? It's just dumb. It's just dumb. <laughs> when I when I learned the business, it just didn't make any sense. It's like, so I'm really paying for it. Don't that shit hold its value though? It's like you really just told me you you could go across the street and get a handful of diamonds for eight hundred dollars. Oh uh, no, nah. see. And then see, the that's... weight the weight on the gold is only three thousand. Yeah, that's that's the only thing. It, it's um, but you charge me it's, fifty thousand. It's 000. branding, bro. It's branding, <laughs> but people. It's like you want to look like a rapper, you know. So that's part of that. Mm -hmm. you know what you think? Like wearing a nice, you know what I'm saying? Like the Louis. Yeah, but 50 track. Cent, 50 Cent. That nigga wear fake. Like he wore, he wore fake fucking chain to Africa. It's Man. all a facade. It's all a uh, uh, just perception. It's like. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, of course. But then. Oh, you probably you was too young for that, so you probably don't even know. I don't know. He cent. wore he wore fake chain. And he was in Africa, and somebody ran on stage and Took snatched it, but it was fake. And um, I mean, I think they beat the shit out of him, but um, it was a fake chain. And he could do that. I didn't look at it like, oh, 50 Cent is a fucking fraud. He's a bum. You get what I'm but saying? But then why are you wearing a chain if you're going to get a fake chain? Because like you said, it's a perception. Sure. People don't only care for stuff like that. That's what they care about. Yeah, you know what I mean. You see that in today's social media. They don't. Right? Not everybody want to hear me dropping gems, but <laughs> if I pull out a big ass knot and talk while yeah. this shit is right here, they watch the whole fucking shit, whole joint. I start counting. I pull out a money machine. <laughs> they watch the whole video. And then the money could be fake, and motherfuckers still yeah, watch it. Yeah, the money it. could be counterfeit. That's a fact. They'll I mean, you got watching. a big ass pinky ring on you right now, so. Yeah, nah, I, shit, I should put it in my pocket. Right? <laughs> <laughs> How much was that ring? Through, How much was that ring? That's a that's a heavy it's 15, piece. Fifteen thousand. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, it's not bad. It's, yeah. I wish you were wearing the fifty thousand dollar chain. That would have been just out of yeah. curiosity. I wanted to see what it looked like. like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I got all type of chains, man. All type of jewelry. Jewelry don't motivate me no more, man. What motivates you? What motivates me is leveling up just in life, showing my daughter, you know what I mean, how how to level up and how you don't need nobody. You know what I'm saying? Shit like yeah, that. Yeah, of course. Jewelry is like materialistic shit. That shit was like to get girls and to look fly. 
I don't need that no more. Were you I could get girls with a hey, fucking were, sweats and a t-shirt. Were you one of those artists that would buy clothes for a music video and return them the next day? Nah. I mean, I've done that before. <laughs> I've done that. I ain't gonna lie, though. <laughs> Fred do that the most, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, cause, man, when you're shooting something, man, you gotta... Come on, man. You can't just be wearing no bummy shit if you're doing a shoot, right? Like. Oh, yeah. Of course not. But then once you make your merch, your own merch, this, this is what a lot of people don't understand, is that you're your own brand as an artist. You're mm -hmm. shooting a video, you're wearing your, your, your shirt. It would be dope if you created your own shit. Like Hell if yeah. everything you and have it'd is be much you, cheaper. For yeah, you. like I'm wearing this Montclair shirt. Yeah. Shirt, you think they're paying me to wear this? No. Yeah. But you, you would have saved money if you would have got a my, few of those printed up yourself. It's exactly. like you know what I mean. And then motherfuckers are like, oh, is it real? Is it real? You could have got a like, shirt yeah. that looked just like that. Or I could have worn your like, logo on it. Or I could have worn like dropping jabs. Like you know what I actually do. Exactly. Like, have, and then like shirts are available now. You know what I mean? Exactly. But then I got Jared Ryder and he got the Louis sweater on, so I gotta, I yeah. gotta match the energy. <laughs> you got the Gucci, Gucci motherfucking. Uh, <laughs> you know, you know how we do it, out here, man. Yes, sir. No, but yeah, man. I mean, so I'm pretty much wrapping up this cut. If there's anything that you can, because this is the, the show is called Dropping Gems, man. Yes, sir. And Dropping Gems is for you to get. You're in the situation right now where a lot of people will listen to what you say, mm -hmm. and there's kids out here that are watching that would want free game, bro. And free game is. Free game, some people buy that shit, man. This is free game. Right. And there's kids out there that want to be an artist. Mm. What's your kind of um, like inspiring word for them? I would say uh, keep working on your craft. Um, do it every day, write, sing, whatever you do, rap, perfect it, and um, know your worth, man. Don't sell yeah. out. You know what I mean? It's not about the dollar. Know the business, or at least. Get with somebody that know the business and um, stay focused, man. Don't worry about the clout. Don't worry about no damn gimmicks. Worry about being the best. You get what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, of course. Because these gimmicky artists, they, it's microwave ever, they come and go. You want to uh. be the Kendricks, you want to be J. Cole, you want to be one of those that's, that's around forever. Jay-Z's 50. Fat Joe's 51 years old. They still relevant. Yeah. Jay-Z yeah. don't even have an Instagram, man. And they money different. Doing. They money different. That's that's a gem right there. Yeah. So yeah, I'm about to wrap this up. Yes, I'm gonna sir. let you go so you can party with uh I'm not gonna name drop, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Close your eyes for me real quick. Alright, my brother. Thank you. Appreciate you, bro. And uh dropping gems, we out. Yeah. <laughs>